Let's all take a second to honor the prince, the prince of all sands, Vegeta. He did his thing this episode. He did what he had to do, but Jiren, man. Jiren is just too much. I gotta say, we've all been looking forward to this episode for two weeks, and there was a lot of hype, a lot of spoilers, a lot of leaks surrounding this episode. Did it live up to the expectations? Did it live up to my expectations? My answer is, it absolutely did. A beautiful episode of Dragon Ball Super, not just in the way it was executed, but also in the visuals. It looked amazing. Unfortunately, there were so many of us trying to get our hands on this episode that it pretty much crashed every streaming site out there. Crunchyroll was down, Verve was down, even Fundimation crashed. So the quality of this episode that I got to see wasn't my usual 1080p full screen, and still it looked beautiful. All that aside, let's hop into this review. Guys, my name is Dooley, and today we are reviewing episode 122 of Dragon Ball Super titled, For One's Own Pride, Vegeta's Challenge to Be the Strongest. So the episode starts with a face-off between Universe 7 and Universe 11. We get a quick pan to the Grand Priest and Zeno who are looking at the spectator seats and they feel like with so many of the universes gone, the spectator seats just look way too empty. So the Grand Priest uses his powers to reduce the size of the spectator area, bringing everyone closer together, all the remaining angels and God of Destructions, as well as Universe 7 and Universe 11 spectators were brought to just a few feet distance away from each other. You know, when I saw this scene, I asked myself right away, what is the Grand Priest? Like, what are his powers? Because it seems to me that at least one of his powers is the ability to manipulate matter. And that wasn't really obvious before. I know we saw him build the stage in the World of Void, but I thought he was just sort of moving the blocks with his mind through like telekinesis or something like that and then maybe heating them up or something with his key to have them stick together to create the platform i didn't think he was manipulating matter on like a molecular level for example like my question is where did the rest of the spectator area go did he just make it all vanish can he make anything he want vanish without even touching it by just looking at it does that mean if Goku or someone else gets into a fight with the Grand Priest that he could just sort of make them vanish with his mind. I mean, this is all really interesting to me because I feel like we've never seen the Grand Priest or anyone else in Dragon Ball Super for that matter do something like this before. And this might be a big insight into the Grand Priest's powers and what we can expect from him in the future. Anyway, back to the fight, back to the platform. There is a face-off between Universe 7 and Universe 11. Goku and Jiren start making their way towards each other and this was a pretty cool scene we get to see the feet of goku walking forward while the feet of jiren were walking forward and in between each step there are flashes of the remaining fighters looking at each other sort of sizing each other up jiren and goku get to a few inches away from each other and almost immediately goku goes into super saiyan blue and the struggle for survival the fight between the final two universes of this tournament begin. Within seconds, another very interesting scene happens. Jiren is punching Goku and Goku is blocking his attacks, but Goku starts smiling and says, whoa, Jiren, you are really strong. My arms are tingling. It feels like they're going numb. And then this is the interesting part. Jiren asks Goku a question. First of all, this is a big deal because Jiren doesn't talk very often. So every time he speaks, it's a good idea to listen because it's going to give you some insight into the type of person he is. He asks Goku, why do you want to get stronger? And Goku's response is, I don't know. I just want to be stronger, something like that. And Jiren's response is, you don't know why you want to get stronger, huh? Then Goku asks him the same question and Jiren replies with this. And I hope you guys are paying attention to this because I think this is a big deal. Jiren replies and says, I seek that which lies beyond strength. And this was deep, guys. This got me for a little bit. I actually paused the video and looked at that for a little bit. Because what is that? What lies beyond strength but you need to become ridiculously strong to acquire? What is that? In my opinion, the answer to that question is a huge insight to who Jiren actually is. To who he wants to be. To his purpose. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is going to sound a little corny. But the only thing I could think of that lies beyond strength but you need strength to acquire is happiness. 
I may do a video on this topic alone because this, like I said, is a big deal and I definitely want to dive in to how important this is. If you guys want to see that video, leave it in the comments and let me know. Just say hashtag Jiren video. I'll know exactly what you're talking about. But I think it's happiness. I think Jiren is seeking his happiness. Anyway, the fight between Goku and Jiren continues for a few more seconds. And then all of a sudden, Vegeta comes out of nowhere. He flies past Goku and throws a punch at Jiren. Goku yells no fair because obviously he wants to fight Jiren himself. But Vegeta gets knocked back and I think it becomes very obvious that Jiren is not a one-on-one -on -one kind of opponent. So they both start attacking him together and Jiren was just sort of easily dominating them. Really interesting though, when Jiren knocked Vegeta back, Vegeta looked at Jiren's movement as he was attacking Goku. And then when Vegeta came back in for his attack, he was able to perfectly dodge Jiren's movement and strike a blow in Jiren's stomach. Everyone was shocked, including Jiren. This was a pretty dope scene. We get Whis talking about Vegeta trying to attain Ultra Instinct. And in all honesty, I think this is foreshadowing that Vegeta will eventually get Ultra Instinct. There's no other reason for Whis to keep mentioning that. Vegeta then proceed to beat the crap out of Jiren for a good few seconds. I was hyped. I was hyped. I know a lot of you guys were probably hyped. My man Vegeta was putting in that work. But then Jiren came to his senses and decided he had to shut it down. He hit Vegeta with a key blast that put him on the path to get knocked off of the platform. One of the most incredible scenes I've ever seen. Vegeta's body was getting carried along the floor, propelled by this key blast. At one point, I asked myself, is Jiren still firing? Like, is he still holding his hand out, pushing his key blast? But I don't think he was. I think his original force was just so strong that it had that much momentum behind it. On the path of getting thrown off the platform, Vegeta is struggling with this key blast, but at the end of the day, he is the prince of all Saiyans. Vegeta is no slouch. There's a giant explosion, and he manages to escape elimination. The prince stands up, his hair is black, he's in base form, and Jiren made the mistake of talking to Vegeta the way he talks to Goku. He didn't realize that Vegeta was royalty. He didn't know that. He said something about Vegeta being too arrogant and mentioned that Vegeta will never be able to beat him. And Vegeta's response is so what if I'm arrogant? This is who I am. I thought that line was so dope because I think it parallels what happens in real life quite often. People at times pick a trait about you and they try to paint it in this negative light. Oh, you're too this or you're too that. And if you're not careful, you could get stuck in this wheel of trying to prove them wrong, trying to not be who you are. But screw that, you are who you are. Embrace that shit. Just like how Vegeta embraces his arrogance, he starts powering up and everyone is amazed by how much power Vegeta has inside of him. Even Zeno, even Zeno is like, wow, Vegeta is getting a lot stronger. Vegeta yells to Jiren, with all that crap you were talking, don't even try to dodge this. And you gotta love Jiren. I knew he was gonna say this and I'm happy that he did. He said, come bring it dope such a dope scene it was so well executed it was so good on so many levels vegeta fires his final flash everyone is in amazement everyone is on looking everyone stops and it connects it hits jiren full force real quick i want to mention the update with gohan android 17 and topo as of right now they are no match for topo guys gohan hits topo with a full kamehameha and it does nothing. He just shakes it off. So if Gohan is going to be effective against Topo, he needs a power up. He needs a transformation, a new form, a new power or something. I'm just putting that out there. Now over to Frieza and Dispo. Frieza had a lot of confidence at first, but it seems like Dispo is going to be a problem for Frieza. Now back over to Vegeta and Jiren. The dust begins to clear after Vegeta's final flash. Vegeta starts laughing. It looks like Jiren is in the floor defeated, but we all know a Vegeta victory never lasts too long. In an instant, Jiren is no longer on the floor. He is instead in front of Vegeta with a key blast in his hand aimed towards Vegeta's midsection. Jiren makes the comment that Vegeta's last attack 
actually had some force behind it which i think was good acknowledgement of how strong vegeta is but then jiren hits vegeta with an attack that pretty much finishes the fight it looks like vegeta is almost completely knocked out he drops to the floor everyone is in awe all the spectators can't believe it and that is where the episode ends now before i end this video i have to mention that for the first time in this tournament we see vegeta completely depleted of stamina he is on the floor after jiren's attack and his eyes are completely gray yes his eyes are missing their pupils but so was goku's when he first fell into the spirit bomb and begun the process of unlocking ultra instinct guys when you couple this with a quote from goku in the preview for the next episode where he says just then vegeta awakens to an amazing power beyond super saiyan blue is the image on your screen right now vegeta's first taste of ultra instinct or will he be unlocking a new power altogether like maybe super saiyan blue 2 he did mention in this episode that goku can keep his ultra instinct either way we will be finding out in episode 123 next week's episode of dragon ball super i am going to be discussing this more in the preview review but i felt like i had to mention it here guys overall an amazing episode of dragon ball super i can't wait until next week it has me very excited for 123 you guys know i will be doing a preview review for that so make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on so you don't miss that as usual my name is Dooley. social media links to follow this channel outside of youtube are in the description hashtag do crew thank you guys for all the support thank you for checking out this video i hope you enjoyed it remember to share it if you did i will be talking to you guys again real soon bye